Hey y'all, Casey here. Welcome back to my queer comics series, where I talk about our queer comics elders who paved the way for us today and generally don't get the credit they deserve. Today I'll be talking about the Finno-Swedish icon, Tova Jonsson. Tova Jonsson was an ethnically Swedish woman born in Finland in 1914. As an ethnic Swede who spoke Swedish, she tended to spend a lot more time with her family than with larger Finnish society. Her closeness with her family and her relative isolation from larger society would come through later in her comics. Both of Tova's parents were artists, and all of Tova's siblings ended up artists as well. Tova's parents wanted her to focus on her fine art, but the thing that brought her the most joy was her comics. She illustrated her first book when she was only 14, and it was called Sere och Pele och Nackens Blackfisker. Starting in the 1930s, she was commissioned to provide illustrations and comics for the satirical, anti-fascist newspaper Garm, which was critical of both Hitler and Stalin. She continued working with Garm during World War II, despite the fact that Finland was politically allied with the Nazis and was being, act was being invaded by both the Nazis and the Soviets. Despite her parents' urgings to stick with fine art, Tova followed her heart and published her first Moomin book in 1945. The first book was called Moomins and the Great Flood. This first book wasn't the financial success that Jonsson had hoped for, but nonetheless, she kept at it. After World War II, Tova started making the Moomin Troll comic strip for the Evening News, which was a highly popular British newspaper. This move, along with Tova's other works being translated into additional languages, uh, started Tova on her road to success. Tova's Moomin, or Moomintro as it's known in Swedish, is a delightful series of books and comics about a whimsical cast of characters. The main family that the stories focus on consists of Moomin, Moomin Mama, and Moomin Papa. Moomin Mama and Moomin Papa were both inspired by Tova's parents, with all of their good and bad characteristics coming through in the stories. The thematic content of Jonsson's Moomin stories varies widely from hijinks and adventures to more adult topics like tolerance, mental health, and queerness. The Moomins ended up being so successful internationally that they led to a plethora of adaptations and translations. Some of the film and TV adaptations of Tova's works include a West German marionette TV show, several anime, several Swedish live-action TV shows, a Soviet cutout animation serial film, a Soviet stop-motion serial film, an Austrian-German-Polish stop-motion TV series, a Swedish animated film, an Armenian animated film, a French animated film, a Dutch-Finnish-Japanese anime, and a British-Finnish cartoon show. Oh, hello, Waffles. There have also been Moomin stage plays, musicals, operas, and ballets, some of which Tova worked on in some capacity, whether that was writing, uh, designing costumes, or writing songs. In addition to the songs that Janssen wrote, some of the other Moomin-inspired musical offerings include a Moomin-themed album by symphonic metal musician Lex Plotnikoff, and an original song by Bjork about the Moomins. And to me, once you've had a song written about you by Bjork, that's basically like being admitted into the Nordic Hall of Fame. Jonsson's Moomin empire grew so large, in fact, that Walt Disney actually offered to buy the rights to the Moomins, but Tova declined. Speaking of Disney, Tova's Moomins have gone on to expire a plethora of theme parks, interactive art exhibits, and so much more. Finland has two Moomin theme parks, one of which is called the Moomin Ice Cave, which I definitely want to go to. Finland also has a museum dedicated to Janssen, which is called the Moomin Valley at the Tempere Art Museum. The museum has a complete full-scale Moomin house that was built by Tova. 
outside of Finland, there is a Moomin themed uh, amusement park in Japan, as well as um, Moomin shops all around the world, and Moomin cafes in Finland, Japan, Hong Kong, Thailand, South Korea, and Taiwan. Fin Air even had an airplane that was decorated with the Moomins that flew from Finland to Japan. So much can be said about each Moomin work, book, adaptation, etc., but I wanted to make sure to include this one tidbit about Tova's experience with getting her first anime in 1969. Janssen was thrilled when she was approached uh, and offered the possibility of having a show produced for the Japanese audience. Unfortunately, though, her source material was not treated with um, the same faithfulness that she would have hoped, so she ended up not being really all that happy with the end product. Toba took issue with the way the anime portrayed her characters, and under the deal she struck with the Japanese studio, she didn't have final say about how the final product will look. So she ended up not being all that thrilled with the final result. She experienced what Hayao Miyazaki would experience several years later when he brought his first film to be uh, translated for the American market. Um, that film was Nausicaa. Uh, this is rather ironic, though, because Miyazaki himself actually was one of the people who worked on Toba's first anime. The second anime was handled by the studio that made classic masterpiece theater animes, which were a forerunner of Iyashike, which was much more fitting for the Moomins. Tova was troubled by the political and social uncertainty and chaos that came from living in a country that was caught between empires. During World War II, they, Finland was caught between the Nazis and the Soviets. And then during the Cold War, they were caught between the West and the Soviets. She used her stories to express these worries and deal with them. But she also used her stories as a cozy, comforting force in her life to help insulate her from all the unpleasantness. In line with wanting to get away from all the uncertainty, Janssen spent her summers away from the bustling city life of Helsinki. During the summer, she would live on a small island called Klovarun, which was scarcely bigger than the cabin that was on it. Much like the other things in Tova's life, Klovarun also found its way into Janssen's stories, uh, serving as inspiration for some of the settings for the adventures that the Moomins would go on. Klovarun was also a safe haven for Janssen, where she could live authentically with her partner, Tuliki Piatella, a Finnish woman. During most of the time that Jonsson and Piatella were together, same-sex activity was illegal in Finland, only being legalized there in 1971. Kloverun's isolated location allowed Piatella and Jonsson to be away from the fear of any prying eyes or the law or Tova's father, who was not supportive of their relationship. Tova's queerness gets explored in her stories in a bunch of different ways, but two of the particularly good examples include the characters Thingmai, Bob, and Tutiki, as well as the story Who Will Comfort Tofel. Before Jonsen was with Tuliki, she was in a relationship with a woman named Vivica. Their secret relationship was portrayed in the Moomin books via the characters Thingmai and Bob two characters who come to Moomin Valley with a secret gem that they protect with their life. The Swedish names for these characters are Toslan and Vyslan, which are pet names for Tova and Vivica. Thingmai and Bob are very careful who they show their gem to for fear of others taking it away. In case it's not obvious enough, the gem represents the secret love between Toslan and Vyslan. Toslan and Vyslan would eventually get the courage to show their gem to all the inhabitants of Moomin Valley. Thingmai and Bob got the acceptance and celebration that Jonsen never got. Tutiki was later introduced as a stand-in for Tuliki Piatella. 
She was pragmatic, supportive, and comforting, both in the stories as well as in real life when Tova was struggling with her mental health. Tova wove issues of mental health into her stories long before it was an accepted topic. One of the clearest examples of this was the story called The Filionque Who Believed in Disasters, which is an allegory for depression. Who Will Comfort Tofel was intended to be an explicitly queer story about two young women who fall in love together. Unfortunately, Tova was forced to change one of the women to, into a, a man because of the censorship laws at the time. Tova's work is internationally famous in countries all over the world, but not so in the U.S. Distribution rights seem to be at fault for this to some degree. When I look in comic book stores in the States, I generally don't see Tova's work. I was actually in Powell's today, uh, a large local bookstore here in Portland, and they had a couple of her books, but not the ones I was looking for, and it was really a, a small fraction of her entire catalog. Thanks to the internet, Jonsson's works have become more accessible, but the movements still need that extra push to actually catch on in America. A current example of how distribution rights continue to trouble uh, Jonsson and her legacy uh, is the movie Tova, which came out uh, this past year, 2020, but it's not available in the United States. I watched the English language, language trailer, though, for it, and it looks wonderful. I can't wait for it to come over here. Tova Jonsson is one of the most famous Finnish people and certainly one of the most famous Finnish artists. She was a wildly independent woman, living life on her own terms, finding joy and whimsy when things were dismal. For all of these reasons, I look up to Tova a great deal. As long as this video is, there is so much more that can be said about this incredible woman. This video is meant to highlight Tova Jonsson's works uh, specifically as they relate to queer comics history. For a more lengthy series of videos um, that are exceptionally well researched, I encourage you to watch the videos made by Henry Kathman about Tova. I'll make sure to include uh, the links to those videos in the description. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you got something out of this video, please click those like and subscribe buttons. Until next time.